Now before we get into the actual click-by-click -click of building a trust, let's spend some time going through a vocabulary exercise of some of the different things that are properties of trusts, some of the ways in which trusts can behave, just some of this basic fundamental knowledge that you need to know whenever you're creating those trusts in your production environment. The first of these is just a, simply a recognition that trusts actually have directionality. They, they have a direction. Whenever you create a trust, you'll find that you are creating a trust in a particular direction. And as we'll find out in a second, even a two-way trust is just simply the collection of two one-way trusts. First and foremost, there are a couple of descriptors that can describe the different domains that participate in a trust. So if you think about two different domains where you're creating that one directional trust between, the trusting domain contains the resources that you want to access. So these are things like files and folders and other uh, things that may have an ACL applied to it. Things with NTFS perms, for example. This is different than the trusted domain, which actually contains security principles. Now, in the real world, you can think of security principles as users and computers, but we kind of consolidate them all together into this word security principles. Easy enough just to think of user objects here. So when I'm going from, when I'm creating a trust, I actually create the trust in a direction that is opposite the direction of the access. And this has everything to do with the arrow and the direction that the arrow is pointing. This has everything also to do with what you consider to be the source domain and the target domain. The little, uh, just the little sort of cheat that I've been using here for a long time is inged, from the ing trusting to the trusted domain. What this means is that when you're creating a trust, as I said, you're creating that trust, a one directional trust. You will create that trust from the trusting domain to the trusted domain. So from the domain that contains the, the documents to the domain that creates those users. Now this may seem like a horrifically complex way to define what trusts are. But recognize that some of this is actually artifacts from a previous method of operations back many, many years ago, over a decade ago, from when Active Directory was in its infancy. Back during those days, Microsoft actually had a couple of different recommendations for Active Directory generation, one of which was the separation of user objects, or sort of security principle objects like users and computers, into their own domain, separate from the domain where your resources would actually exist. In this configuration, you could have a single trusting domain, or excuse me, a single trusted domain with all of your user objects in it, and one or more trusting domains with all the resources that you want to access. This was, again, way back in the day, a way of doing, a, a way of designing domains that we have since realized was just excessively complex. And so the whole notion of resources and security principles being separate is something you just don't see in the wild these days. In fact, I, I can't even remember the last time I've seen a, a Active Directory domain design that included such configurations. Now, these days you find most trusts actually being bi-directional trusts. So if I have two different domains or two different forests that I'm creating, more often than not, I'm going to create a bi-directional trust between those two forests or two domains. We do this because it's just easier that way than trying to have to think about where the object should be and then applying permissions from the object into the new location and having to switch between different domains whenever I'm working between resources and the objects themselves. These days, most of the trusts you'll find are bi-directional, but it's important to recognize again, as I said, that the, the, the trust themselves, even in a bi-directional trust, you're actually dealing with two single you know, one-way trusts that are collected together. Trusts can also be transitive. And if you think of transitivity, transitivity is that whole principle, like if A equals B and if B equals C, then A equals C. What this essentially means is that if I have a trust, a trust here, that uh, trusts, for example, domain or forest A to domain or forest B, and then I do the same thing between B and C, in the case of a transitive trust, A will directly also be trusted to C. Not all trusts are transitive, but certain types of trusts absolutely are. So what we're talking about here is just the fact that trusts have direction. And, and again, this is kind of academic, but recognize that these are the kinds of things that you could potentially be tested on when it comes time for the 70-412. The other thing you should be aware of, too, is the fact that trusts can come in a variety of different flavors, so different kinds of trusts that you can create. The first of which is an external trust. Now, the, the, it's important to recognize where these trucks, trusts actually could exist. Let's assume that I have, for example, a forest with multiple different domains. 
So I've got a, an Active Directory forest over here with a bunch of different domains that are attached together. Here we have these three different domains. And then over here I have another forest where I've got uh, maybe four different domains that are attached together. Well, an external trust is any time a domain in one forest trusts a domain in another forest. So there is the trust that occurs between one domain and the other domain in a forest. So this external trust is considered external because it extends past the bounds of the original forest, or actually between both forests. And it's generally used to provide access to resources between two different forests where you wouldn't have a forest trust in place. I'll talk about a forest trust here in just a second, but recognize again that I'm going from one domain in one forest to a domain in a completely different forest. Now you can also contrast an external trust with a shortcut trust. An external trust is between two domains in two different forests, but a shortcut trust is a literal shortcut that can occur between two domains in the same forest. Let's assume in this case that I've got, again, a whole bunch of domains that I've collected together into a single forest, right? So here's my, my root domain, and I've got a bunch of other domains, and I've created a domain tree, or actually two different branches of the domain tree over here with multiple different domains. Gosh, this domain, uh, this whole forest structure is pretty large. Well, when I get a little overzealous with uh, the creation of multiple domains and large domain trees, the process of authenticating a user to a resource can require a whole lot of different hops. Remember that the, 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 the domain controllers for all of these different domains can exist in multiple different locations, right? Denver, uh, Phoenix, Las Vegas, DC, New York, um, Chicago. And so for me to actually access the resource, for me to just even authenticate to the other domain to begin getting access to the resource can require one, two, three, four, five different hops to get there. That's a lot of hops, and that could potentially be a lot of additional communication that has to occur and a long delay that needs to happen for a user to get access to a resource. For this reason, a shortcut trust can be created between two domains in the same forest that allows you to literally shortcut that whole tree structure so that a user in one domain has access to access resources in another domain without having to hop through the entire infrastructure. Again, you don't find these things too often in the wild these days because most organizations have not created such a large and widely spanning forest infrastructure that a shortcut trust is required. But they do exist, and it is possible to create them if you find just a slowdown of access from one location to the other. Shortcut trusts are required for, as you can see here, to speed authentication between far-reaching branches of, a, of an existing forest. That's the whole reason for their existence. Now, a third type of trust has a lot to do with, uh, or very similar to do with what we saw back in the external trust, but it is a very specific kind of trust between two different forests. A forest trust is a trust that exists between two forests, and very specifically, it exists at the root domain of those two forests. So drawing once again, if we think about having multiple forests here, here's our, our second forest with multiple different domains in it. And here's our first forest with perhaps more multiple domains in it. And I need to be able to connect these forests together. I can connect these forests together with a forest trust that occurs right here at the top between the two root domains in the forest. This forest trust is transitive, which means it allows all the domains in either forest to authenticate with each other. That's handy. And in fact, it is the most common type of trust that you see created today. You in company.pri buy a jelly bean factory at jellybeans.com. Well, you need to be able to connect those two forests. Generally, when you do that, you want to be able to connect the two forests together in their entirety. And when that happens, you create a forest trust between those two forests. Forest trusts will uh, link all the domains of both forests. Forest trusts are always transitive. And forest trusts also support configurable authentication. Now, what's cool about this is that rather than having to create a bunch of different uh, external trusts that can get unwieldy over time, especially as you start meshing those trusts together, configurable authentication allows you to configure the authent authentication between the forest so that even though it is completely transitive, perhaps you just want to lock it down to certain elements. We'll talk a little later about how to actually configure a forest trust, and I'll show you how a forest trust works between our company.pri domain and our specialized.net domain. There is actually a fourth type of trust as well, and that is one that you'll see occasionally. That is a realm trust. And a realm trust is a trust to a non-active directory Kerberos realm. 
You can think here like a trust to a Linux environment or some other environment that may not necessarily be Windows based. These you'll see occasionally, particularly when you're implementing third-party solutions that allow you to connect your Active Directory to other different types of directories that may exist out there. So four really, you know, four, maybe kind of five different types of flavors of trust if you include the automatically generated trusts that occurs between domains in a single forest. These are what you gotta know for the exam. The biggest and most important of which is again here, these forest trusts, because these are the ones that you're probably gonna create the most out of all the different trust types that exist.